So hello, and as you know, the Renegade Economist team is at the moment on tour. We're going all over the world to see how the global downturn is affecting different nations. Last week, America. This week, Pakistan. Today, Karachi. And here we are in a, tu a truck painting shop, which is a tongue twister, I can tell you. Uh, and the reason we're here is we were so enamoured by uh, this truck art that we had to get to the bottom of A, what it all meant, and B, more importantly, who did it. They're the guys who do it, and... <laughs> and uh, I don't know what that meant, but uh, it looked very funny. Um, and what we're going to do is decipher some of the Urdu on these trucks, work out what it means, uh, and let you know all about it. And I know what you're thinking, you've wanted to know this all your life. Well, don't worry, it's happening now. You look at these, I mean, if you can pair your average Scania white English truck to this. I mean, lads at home, you, you've got a fair bit to do, haven't you? Look at it. I, the, the, the most creative a lot of truckers can do from a, a kind of well, an inscription point of view in the UK is right, I wish my wife was as dirty as this. Just walk further down this way, we can see where the magic happens. And, uh, and this is it. This is it. This is the spray shop. This is the nerve centre of the welding department of this yard. That's the, uh, that's the welder. I'm not a big fan of health and safety, but uh, my gut feeling is that this isn't going to pass. You know, for all the sanitization of the West and the, I suppose, what we deem as normality. There's a vibrancy here which is unsurpassed. And I mean, look, look at this guy here. It, this is um, close to my heart. So my grandfather used to drive uh, uh, tankers like this for Texaco when he, uh, for many years. And you know, insipid, weren't they? There's a big corporate brand on the side of it. But look at these guys. Talk about taking pride in your work. One thing I would say when this guy works is that there's a, a total kind of freedom and there's a, a lack of expectation and uh, he clearly practice, practices every day, does this, but he just, it's effortless, which is a, a bit of terps. Magic swirl, which kind of gives it a blood orange kind of colour. Or is it a burnt tangerine? Who knows? Oh, I think it's a burnt tangerine. Uh, Twelve years. Twelve years. And, and um, how do you start? How's your apprenticeship? You just start at the bottom and work up? Maybe it's your children he has work started. So he started as a child. Yeah. And, uh, he looks incredibly happy with his work. Is, is he? Because Maybe okay. Uh, only okay. <laughs> he looks incredibly yeah. happy. He's for someone who's only okay. Yes. Thank you very much. So look, this is halfway through the paint job, and as you can see clearly, we've got uh, your, your, your kind of insipid, usual manufacturer's uh, base there, and but that that doesn't deter these guys. Oh no! Look, he's put the bumper on already. That's that's his dog. Uh, he's put, he's put, <laughs> look at this, he's put his bumper on and so manually uh, someone has to get down at night and, cl and open these when they want to put the lights on. Look at that. There you go. Daytime, night. Genius. Look inside there. That is Liberace would think he'd died and gone to heaven. In fact that isn't dissimilar to, it's a boudoir. Isn't it? Here we go. I can't talk to you about the symbolism or the art, but I can talk to you about this, right? The basic premise is that if it doesn't jingle or rattle, don't put it in. That's... This is one of the most famous truck decoration workshops in Pakistan. For 40 years, Giho Rihas has worked as a painter in Rawalpindi on the outskirts of Islamabad. His small enterprise employs five people where they specialize in customizing trucks. In this South Asian nation, artists and drivers have taken great pride in personalizing these road transport hulks since they first hit the country's highways. Yay. 
Foreigners don't take the effort to decorate their trucks. For us, this is part of our culture. These diesel-driven monsters, which can travel hundreds of thousands of kilometers in their life cycles, bear all sorts of colorful motifs which often show the town and region where the driver was born. Politicians, Bollywood actresses, every square inch of the truck gets a personal touch, even the windscreen. No, these decorations are not dangerous because the drivers are used to them. If you remove them, the drivers wouldn't be able to operate properly. The truck really has to stand out. It really has to glow. The police, however, fail to see eye to eye with the drivers and often stop them for breaking the country's laws on vehicle safety. Drivers are fined for overcrowding their windscreens with writing and pictures that could compromise their vision. But many truck drivers protest that the laws are unjust. The sun makes the truck's decoration shiny, and I've been arrested for that. We can see the road easily from the middle of the windscreen. Take a seat. See for yourself. Despite the risk of police action and on-the-spot fines, the colorful tradition seems set to continue. In this country, where it can cost over 10,000 US dollars to decorate a truck, or six times a driver's annual salary, owners, it seems, will do anything to remain king of the road.